Hello, and welcome to a very special episode where we get to talk about ferrets. Now, this is one of my favorite types of animals, and you're going to notice two very different types of uh, episodes if you follow along with the pet channel. So sometimes I'm going to take a common animal, and I'm going to try and talk you out of getting it, because it's probably a little bit more work than you originally thought. And then there's other times where I'm going to take an uncommon animal, and I'm going to tell you all the reasons why they're actually a great pet to have. So this is going to be the latter, obviously. Uh, once again, disclaimers, I am not a vet, I'm not a professional, I'm just a guy that worked at a pet store, and I know a lot of people's initial misconceptions when it comes to certain animals. So I want to pass that knowledge along to you, and don't stop with me. Definitely do your research before you ever get an animal, <clears throat> especially a ferret. Um, because, for instance, you might not even be able to get one where you live. Uh, they're illegal in some states, they're just not worth it in others. What I mean by that is, uh, for instance, in New Hampshire, you would have to go to Massachusetts. It isn't that they're illegal in New Hampshire, but no pet store is going to carry one because there are strict laws as far as their um, uh, shots and stuff, and they are going to require shots. So just keep that in mind. You know, Even with small animals, people think there might not be any vet bills, but quite often that is not the case at all. Um, if you check out my guinea pig episode, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. So, um, when, in the state of New Hampshire, for instance, uh, if a pet store is supposed to carry a, um, a ferret, it'll cost them roughly about $800 in vet bills in order to sell the ferret at $200. So even if you get the habitat and you're forever buying food from them, in, in the long run, it just isn't cost effective for a store to have it. So definitely do your research about what your availability is in your area for them. They're not going to be as uh, common as some of the other animals that you're probably potentially thinking about buying, but I really want to talk you into doing a ferret because, again, they're such a fun one, so let's kind of just jump right in. Uh, yes, it's a weasel. Um, yeah, sometimes they can have markings that look like a raccoon. Uh, some of them come in uh, all white fur with red eyes, look like a vampire ferret. Uh, I don't know why people shy away from those. I think those guys look really neat, but... They are just an absolute blast. They, um, by the way, I always usually say think adoption first, but in this case, you're not going to have much luck finding uh, ones up for adoption. Most of the time, once you become a ferret owner, you become a ferret lover. And instead of trying to get rid of your ferret, you're actually usually trying to get more. Um, they're kind of like the old commercial for potato chips where you can't just stop at one. And I don't encourage you to only have one. These are a very, very social creature. It would just be kind of cruel to have them be by themselves because what they would love to have is a companion to catnap with. And they do catnap a lot, almost more than cats do. They, they love to have somebody to catnap with, wake up, wrestle with, eat some food with, go back to sleep with, and then just continue that cycle on throughout the whole day. And uh, just watching them play is an absolute blast. They arch their backs up super high. And if you've ever seen a ferret... They are just stretched so long. It's, it's almost ridiculous just how long these guys can get. And so they take all of that back, and then they put it up into an arch, and they do hippie hoppies at each other, little sideways things. It's, it's absolutely adorable to watch. Sometimes it can be a little frightening because you don't realize uh, when they're playing that it's just play, that it isn't them fighting. And the reason why you might not realize that is because they have, uh, you know, big, long, pointy teeth. But... They also have extremely thick fur. So when they grab each other by, like, you know, the, the necks and the ears and they're dragging each other around, um, they really aren't feeling any of that. That's just how they play. They, they, they play pretty hard. They, they sleep hard and they play hard. So kind of like a spirit animal for me. But the, um, you know, so speaking of their necks, that is going to be something that's going to come up quite often is that one of the ways to uh, handle a uh, ferret is, much like many animals, um, the mom will often lift them up by the nape of their neck and in order to move them from place to place. It, this is commonly done in uh, dogs, cats, I believe, uh, mice, hamsters. Quite a few of the animals will, will do it that way. So it's kind of instinct for a lot of creatures that if you lift them up by the neck, that they just kind of go limp. In fact, almost exclusively every time that you lift a ferret up by the neck, it's going to yawn. It, it's, it, it is what it is. It's just another uh, you know, thing that's adorable about them. But um, you can lift them, um, you know, scruff them is, is technically what uh, they, they call it. So you can scruff them 
and you do this for so, some different reasons. Uh, one of them is that they are an animal that does bite quite a bit. Now, I don't want to deter you because pretty pretty much in my experience, I don't believe that I've ever had a ferret break that break my skin with their teeth. More often, they've actually broken my skin with their claws because this is an animal. We should probably get all the, this stuff out of the way. This is an animal that not only is going to need shots, but it's also going to need to have maintenance on its fingernails. It's going to have to have, get nail clips. Um, this is very important for many reasons. One, uh, I've seen them get their uh, poor nails caught in uh, you know the small grates. But also, you know, they, for, for the most part, they can be very uh, well potty trained, but it doesn't mean that there's still a 0% chance of them getting um, poop under their nails. And the shorter the nail, the less chance there is of having that. Now, having said that, much like any other nail and any other animal, they will have a quick. They'll have the pink, you know, um, you know, bit of blood supply going to the nail, and you want to make sure that you only clip the white part, not the red part, like pretty much any animal. Uh, and with these guys, I don't think I've ever seen a black claw on a ferret, so it's a little bit easier than some other animals like dogs that can oftentimes have a completely black nail, and then it's really hard to find the quick. So they do require a little bit of maintenance. The occasional bath, um, and that's one thing that I want to get into. I'm glad that I mentioned bath. I'm complimenting myself here. All right, so... The biggest deterrent for people having a ferret is that they stink. I want to address this right here and right now. So, if anything, if you take care of them, the most that you're going to have to deal with is the slightest bit of muskiness, and even that can be um, very minimal. So the main reason why people think the ferrets stink, well, first of all, they are a um, domesticated version of a polecat, so they actually do have a scent gland much like a skunk, not quite as severe. However, any ferret that you're gonna be able to get, at least in the US, is going to be not only spayed and neutered, but also descent glanded. That's not really technically a word, but you know what I'm saying. They have the scent gland removed. So you don't have to worry about any smell coming from them from the gland. Now, the reason why people think that they still are stinky, anybody that's seen my nutrition episode knows what I'm gonna say next, it's their diet. So these guys are carnivorous. So if you have not so great of food, yeah, it's going to be very pungent, very strong ammonia smells. It's, it's going to fill the whole room. Most people that give them subpar food are going to also have to dedicate an entire room to the ferrets and stuff a towel under the door. Now, like I said before, they can be potty trained. So if you're cleaning out the litter box quite often and you're also giving them decent food, that smell is going to be reduced to almost nothing. It's, it's insane the difference. So. I'm not going to name names, but the most common of breeders of ferrets, uh, the company also makes ferret food, and in my opinion, it is very subpar to what a ferret should eat. One of the best foods that you can give a ferret is actually um, kitten food, dry, dry kitten uh, food, um, preferably one that is one, one of those brands, like a lot of the brands have the, oh, what if they were eating it in the wild kind of diet, you know, where it's like grain-free and high, high, high protein count. Now, I don't know a whole lot of dogs or cats that need to have a diet that mimics them being in the wild. Most of them have a much more sedentary lifestyle than that, but in the case of ferrets, it's very true. So here's the problem with uh, ferrets' digestion. So they're, they're carnivorous, so they need a meat-based food, and they also have, for even for their long body, you think there'd be a lot of intestine in there, and it's not the case. They, they're pretty much just eat poop, eat poop. They don't get too much of the nutrients, so they have to be constantly eating. So they do poop quite a bit. And again, if it's subpar food, it's, it's going to have a smell to it. So um, I, I guess I can shout out one food. So um, Wellness Kitten Core, uh, wellness core uh, Kitten Formula. Is, is actually a really decent one. If you switch them to that food, you're going to notice an insane difference in the smell. And also, just like any pet, it's just a matter of keeping up with the uh, with the litter dish. You know, you don't let that you know thing get piled up to the you know top of the cage. So, since we're on the subject, we might as well talk about their litter situation. Um, they are uh, litter trainable, and one thing that you need to do is this is going to be a far different shaped litter dish than say for a cat. A cat will have a flat round box. Now with a ferret, they have a different shaped one where it's actually corner shaped and it actually has a high back. The reason for this is that they are a prey animal. They're a predator animal, but also a prey animal, much like many animals in the kingdom. 
So what they like to do if they are going to have to, um, you know, go to the bathroom, that's when they're at their most vulnerable, like many animals. Drabs are most vulnerable when they're drinking, but pretty much most any other animal is at their most vulnerable when they're in the middle of eliminating, I guess we could say. So the ferret likes to back into a corner by instinct. They like to have a high back so that they had, you know, can, you know, back into something. And so uh, that's why the litter box is shaped that way. So when you first get a ferret, especially if it's a brand new baby ferret, it's not going to be potty trained because it doesn't know. It's probably going to eliminate wherever. So what you do is you just wait till you can find out which corner they prefer to eliminate in the most often. And then you take uh, the litter box, you put it into that corner. And potty training them is the easiest thing in the world. All you get to do is just leave a little bit of poop where you want them to poop. So... You know, whenever you're cleaning up a litter box, you never want to clean it up 100%. You want to leave a little dollop, you know, just just, just a little nugget um, in, in the in the box once you're done cleaning so that that way they know, smell, smell, oh, this is where the poop goes, and then they do it by nature. To the point where when you can really trust them, you can actually let them loose, they'll play around all over the, uh, the, the room and then run back over the litter box to eliminate and then go back to playing. It's awesome. There's there's uh, a handful of animals that you can actually potty train with any sort of regularity. And with ferrets, uh, they're one of them. And it's, like I said, one of the easiest things in the world. You just keep a little bit of poop where you want the poop, and you just clean the other areas that you don't want them to poop very thoroughly so that it doesn't still smell like, um, you know, poop area. So one of the things that you want to do is uh, when you get cleaners, make sure that they're pet safe and that they also kill the enzyme that is in pee and poop that makes it still smell uh, like something. Um, you definitely want to, you know, refrain from doing Lysol. If you're going to do bleach, make sure that it's, you know, the the the, the, the really really thinned out. Like, you know, I mean, Google what, whatever the uh, solution is supposed to be, but you definitely want to make sure that it's a very very bare minimum of bleach, and that you also, you know, thoroughly rinse it afterwards. And again, bleach I don't believe kills the enzyme, so you want to make sure that you're getting a cleaner that does kill the enzyme. Um, but yeah, so they're, uh, you know, uh, very easily potty trained. Really quick, I want to get back to the diet. I know I'm jumping all over the place. I'm just excited. I love these guys so much, and I hope that you will too. But the uh, the diet, so one of the reasons why I found out about this is that we, uh, when we had them at the store, we would get the same same food from the same company that, that breeds them. And they would, it would just drive me crazy. They would always fling the food out of the food dish um, and I, and it, it was just my, oh my God, it's like, you know, get lost in the, in the bedding. We would throw half of it away whenever we did litter changes, um, bedding changes. And so I, I would try to improvise by, you know, having a dish with a cover with just a little hole in the center so that when they dug, it would just go to the side and it wouldn't actually come out of the dish. And then I was told by a uh, former coworker who had, uh, five, seven of them. I can't remember, but she said, Oh, well, no, it's because it's subpar food. When you give them the really good food, they never fling it out of the dish. They want to eat more. So that whole time, those poor ferrets were going, hey, where's the the good stuff? I, you, you're just giving me crap over here. So, you know, definitely, I can't stress enough, you know, keeping that in the diet. And they also do have, uh, you know, the uh, vitamin supplements. They have treats for them. Um, ferrets are actually very trainable for tricks and stuff. I mean, yeah, you know, let, let's just get into some of the fun stuff about ferrets. I mean, oh, my God. Them sleeping is probably one of, one of my favorite things about them. It, favorite things and also it's, it's led to some misunderstandings, but I have had kids running up to me in tears. I, that sounds bad that, that this is the, one of the better parts of it. So what, it, what happened was is that the kid had been banging on the glass of the habitat, which, by the way, if you're a kid watching this, I don't recommend it. I'm going to get adult uh, at, at times, and I don't want to have to censor myself. Plus, you have to be 18, over 18 in order to get a pet anyway. So if you're old enough to have a pet, you're old enough to hear some of the language that I'm going to say. But anyway, don't bang on the glass on any creature. None of them like it. It usually terrifies them. It usually, you know, stresses them out. And guess what? If they get stressed, they can also get health issues. And now we have to deal with that. We have to take them to the vet. It's just not a nice thing. Don't bang on the glass. I don't know why it's the natural instinct of people to do it, but don't. Anyway, so many a kid has come up to me screaming in tears that the ferret is dead because they were banging on the glass and the ferret didn't wake up. Well, that's because a ferret, if it's in a deep enough sleep, can can sleep through a friggin' tornado, a thunderstorm, you know, name a big noisy event, 
you know, the, like a ferret, I think, is probably a good uh, pet to have if you're in one of those crazy apartments that's like right next to the train, because it, it's insane. I've, I've actually lifted one up, and they're just completely just drooped down, looking com like, you know, just dead as a rag doll, and they were just in that deep of a sleep. It's kind of hilarious. So they enjoy sleeping in hammocks, and oftentimes they will have like their entire upper body just hanging out of the hammock like they just look like just so much dead meat it's it's once you know that that's a thing about them i find it hilarious but the first time if you're not prepared i mean you can be like oh my god are you kidding me but no once you realize that that's just how they are it's it's stinking adorable they will sleep anywhere in the most uncomfortable positions and and, and you know not have a care in the world and speaking of that's one of the things that i love about them so i don't know if it's because they get hand um you know like hand trained before they get sent to the pet store but this is one of the few creatures that i've met that requires no no time at all in order to be comfortable being handled by humans like th these guys are completely fearless and what i mean when i say that is that i'm not recommending this at all i you know disclaimers this is a fictional hypothetical that i did this but i um hypothetically could take a uh, ferret out of its habitat and do all sorts of things with it, you know, and then put it back into the habitat, and it would be like, again, 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 that was awesome. They, 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 they seem to have absolutely no fear. They, you can, you know, play, play, and it makes sense when you look at the way that they play. You could play rough with them. I mean, they play rough with each other. You can play rough with them, and, you know, they're completely cool with it. So, I just think that that's so, so cool about them, is that, you know, um, still, obviously, obviously, if you're having them around the kid, supervision, please. But for the most part, you, this is one of those pets that you don't have to worry as much about the kid having kid gloves for because, you know, they, they, they love it rough, you know. So just, you know, within reason. Um, and, you know, these, these are uh, one of those guys where, yes, if you are going to have them out to play, then they, they're, they're, mis they're mischievous, they get into everything. They love to chew, so, you know, usually if you're going to have a play area set up, you know, no, no power cords around, um, nothing that can fit in their mouths. I mean, you know, basic common sense stuff, but just keep in mind that they're going to actively search for it. And even though a ferret, especially when they're an adult, can actually look pretty pretty husky, a little, 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 little fluffy, you know, uh, around the belly, uh, much like a lot of rodents and, uh, you know, small animals, um, they can squeeze through some tight spaces, so even though that uh, ferret that you have has a bit of a belly, it could probably fit under the door, it, you know, so keep that in mind. They can squeeze into tight places, and there's nothing worse than trying to get a small animal that's into a space that's so tight that even you can't get to it. But, um, oh, what was I going to uh, go back to real quick? I'll, th I'll think of it, but, yeah, I, I'll think of it. Oh, so the biting, yes. So for the biting, uh, they, they do bite each other quite a bit. And that's one of the things that you're going to have to deal with when they're young, when, when uh, they first, uh, you first start handling them. Again, I've never really had them break the skin, but they, they've got some pretty big pointy teeth and it can hurt. And for all I know, I got lucky in that I, I dealt with it immediately and so it never got to the whole breaking the skin point uh, part. But anyway, um, and again, please research this to make sure that I'm not just uh, telling tales out of school, but you can scruff them. It's, it's a, a bit of a sign of a dominance thing. And also, you can blow in their face. So if they do bite a little too hard, they can do test nibbles, that's fine. But if they bite too hard, what you can do is you can scrap them, blow in their face, and it's a little bit of a dominance thing. And they, if you just do that repeatedly, then they kind of get, you know, all right, all right, I won't bite you so that we can continue playing because I just hate being, you know, humiliated with getting scruffed and getting blown, you know, in the face. And I can't remember if I mentioned it, but that is also a great way when you're trimming the nails. So, like I said, they'll usually go, um, they, they usually go limp and do their little ferret yawn. And that's a great time to, you know, either, if you're really good at it, you can, you know, scruff them and do it yourself. But ideally, you would have somebody else scruff them, support their bottom, and then have a second person uh, trim their nails real quick. And this isn't, you know, a, a miracle thing. Eventually, after a while being scruffed, a ferret will get restless because it's like, okay, this has been long enough. I really want to play now. Um, so there is that. Now, oh God, the, the, I feel like there's, there's more to it, but... Um, there's definitely something I'm missing, so I'm going to ramble for a little bit uh, while I'm waiting, but um, 
all right, so I talked about the colors. I talked about the, uh, you know, um, social, yeah, so the socialness of them and stuff. Um, I, I usually recommend doing a minimum of two. Uh, they are very sociable. And this is an important thing because if they are by themselves for too long, they can get territorial. And it's unfortunate. It's very true for a lot of animals, actually. If it's one that's normally very social and then you have them by themselves uh, for maybe six months or more, and then you try to introduce another animal into it, then they're like, well, this is my house. What are you, what are you doing that for? Um, so definitely, you know, I, I recommend having, you know, more than one and trying not to go too long in between not having more than one just so that that way. But be careful because that's something that I, I've mentioned with guinea pigs is a lot of people don't think about it ahead of time, but if you are going to have a multi-pet household, well, then when one passes, well, now i got to get a companion for that one. So now you have a new young one. Now, the other one is going to be older and it's going to pass, but, well, now you need a companion for the formerly younger one that's now older. And so it ends up becoming, okay, well, I guess this is my life from now on. I'm going to be a ferret owner from now on, unless I'm just going to end and have that one final ferret be lonely, you know, for, for the, the last portion of its life, you know. So it, it is something to definitely, definitely consider long term when you're going to go into a multiple, uh, multiple pet household. Oh, I remembered what I wanted to say. I'm kind of glad that I saved it for the end because if if you don't want to hear this, uh, then you know you can just turn it off now. But there is a very good reason why you should not breed this animal. Now, this is true of almost any pet that I'm going to be talking to you about. Leave it to the professionals. There's probably too many out in the world as it is, but with ferrets especially, there's a reason why they come not only de-skunked but also de-genitaliaed. I guess you could say. And that is because, for instance, with the females, if they go into heat and they don't find a mate, they could die. Just from not being able to find a mate, they can go into heat and they can die. You know, like, so why would you even want to have to deal with that, first of all? Second of all, even if they did find a mate, and this is where this is, it's getting to be adult time, even if they did find a mate, the act of procreation with ferrets looks like a rape. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It basically looks like a rape. So, like I said, leave it to the professionals. Don't think that you're going to go out and start breeding ferrets on your own because I can't recommend recommend against it enough. I do this for pretty much any animal that I talk to. You think it might be fun, like, you know, oh, let's make a litter of hamsters. Oh, let's make a school of fish. Trust me, nine times out of ten, 99.99999% of the time, it's going to be so much more of a hassle than you realize. But with ferrets especially, holy crap, it is just... I'm, I'm so glad that there's a company that is dedicated to doing it so that, you know, we, we don't have to do, deal with it because that just seems like an absolute nightmare. So, please, for God's sakes, don't breed your pets. And, I, I mean, that's going to stand, stand true for probably, pretty much most of my videos. But with that one, I think I made a couple of good points of why you don't want to do that. So, um, but if you do ever want to, you know, invite them into your life, I'm telling you, th this is one where... I'd heard the rumors too, you know, I'd, I'd heard that they were stinky, and in, in my case, when I was working at a pet store, I was, I, I, it was reaffirmed. I was like, yep, they reek. They absolutely stink. This is a disgusting thing. I'm so glad that they have this little poof air freshener that goes off every couple of seconds, just above it, because otherwise this entire store would probably smell like them. Uh, you know, don't neglect the litter box. Do regular bedding changes, you know. Make sure that they're getting high quality food. Make sure they're getting their vitamins. Make sure that you're taking them to the vet, that they're getting their shots. And it seems like a little bit more work than, you know, say, one of the more simpler sounding pets. But I feel like that the reward of just sheer, you know, any anytime anybody thinks about getting a pet, especially a first time pet, they think of a companion. They think of one that they're actually going to be able to interact with. So a lot of people are disappointed when they find out that a certain reptile or even a certain, you know, furry creature is more of a look, don't touch kind of animal. Ferrets are the exact opposite. This is definitely a go ahead and touch, touch, touch. They absolutely love chilling with you. They think that you're great. They think that you're just this big, huge, gigantic animal that for some reason doesn't want to eat, eat them, just wants to play with them. And they couldn't be happier about it. And I, I'm telling you, it's, 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 it's a, it's a really, 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 I know I gotta, I gotta get better about just coming up with different words than just saying really about 8,000 times, but that's kind of how I feel about these guys. It's, it's, it's a fan favorite of mine, and I really do hope that you consider it. And again, if, if, if you do try it, 
it's it's kind of risk free because you know worst case scenario you find out that they're not the pet for you and most pet stores have a 30-day return policy you're either going to fall head over heels in love with them by that point or you're going to give them back and also if you know circumstances happen that it's beyond the 30 days i guarantee you that there is a fet uh, ferret owner out there that is just dying for the newest addition to the family so again always think adoption first um, not only when it comes to getting a pet but also when it comes time to give one up and I think that's actually a great note to end on hopefully I will see you later and you're going to be showing a little ferret uh, video of me saying see that's the guy that's the guy that got me to get you God one well